The top stories tonight and why news. World Health Organization says Delta is the most dominant variant in the Philippines and confirms Delta variant community transmission in the country. President Rodrigo Duterte defends the Department of Health from criticisms as the deadline for releasing special risk allowances to healthcare workers lapses. The Philippine government continues its efforts to extract the remaining Filipinos in Afghanistan. Senator Richard Gordon reacts to the president's tirade, saying those who resort to personal attacks are weak. The United States of America finally completes the evacuation of its military troops from Afghanistan. And China limits video games for children to three hours a week. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Kazan City. Today is Tuesday, August 31, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media account and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. San Lazaro Hospital declared they are almost in full capacity of COVID-19 patients. Due to this, all mild cases will be transferred to other government isolation facilities or temporary treatment monitoring facilities. In a message, infectious disease expert Dr. Ron Jean Solante said he made hospital rounds this afternoon and saw young and adult COVID-19 patients. Dr. Solante said this is the highest number of severe and critical COVID-19 patients recorded in the hospital compared to the previous surge early this year. He said less than 20% of the patients are vaccinated. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte directed the National Task Force Against COVID-19 to evaluate granular, granular or localized lockdowns. Rosa Lecos details why. President Rodrigo Duterte acknowledged the need to recalibrate the government's COVID-19 response. This following the record-breaking tally yesterday at more than 22,000 new cases. Although the implementation of the enhanced community quarantine imposed in Metro Manila has somewhat lowered the reproduction rate of the virus, the chief executive wanted to find out if granular lockdowns would work better. Whether the rise in the number of cases is due to the Delta variant or not, we need to recalibrate our response. We are also evaluating whether granular or localized lock lockdowns would work best in our current situation. Kailang pag-aralan ito ng, ng task force. Modified enhanced community quarantine with additional restrictions has been imposed over Metro Manila, Bataan, and Laguna until September 7, 2021. Meanwhile, the president said although there is a COVID-19 surge in the country, he noted the number of fatalities is lower compared to other countries. Based on the recent report of the Department of Health, more than 33,000 Filipinos have died due to COVID-19. Hirap ang America ngayon, ang Europe is suffering from a maraming mas namatay. Turkey, maraming patay. Saudi Arabia, mas marami ang patay. Ito, atin hawa lang. Ang patay natin, hindi masyado ganun karami. The president once again urged the public to observe health protocols amid the threat of Delta variant and get vaccinated if eligible. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Healthcare workers appeal to the government, particularly to the Department of Health, to also provide special risk allowances to other hospital personnel. But President Rodrigo Duterte defended the Department of Health from criticisms as the deadline for releasing special risk allowances to healthcare workers lapses. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Live. Yes, Asher. 
Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte disclosed in his recorded address aired today that the law limits the government to release special risk allowance to all healthcare workers. The chief executive explains that as the 10-day deadline, he said for the Department of Health as well as the Department of Budget and Management to release the benefits of healthcare workers has ended. Kasi hindi ka basta-basta magasto yan. Magbayad ka na walang basis, mapaplug ka na naman. DOH hands are tied and could not give the SRA to all health workers because of the limitations of the law. The Commission on Audit earlier flagged the release of certain ben health benefits to health workers not specifically mentioned in the law. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III states that over 500 million peso fund was already released for the special risk allowance. He further says only 75 million pesos worth of SRAs has yet to be released, but is ready for distribution among local government units and private hospitals. Healthcare workers in Dr. Jose Fabella Memorial Hospital have already received the said allowances, but are still waiting for the release of the other compensation, such as meals, accommodation, and transportation allowance as mandated by Bayanihan law. They also appeal to the government to provide such allowances to other hospital personnel aside from nurses. <laughs> Yung mga security guard natin at saka yung mga field care, sana po sila ay mabigyan din ng tinatawag na SRA. Kasi once na sila ay pumasok dito sa hospital, exposed na rin po sila. And also, mas marami pa nga po silang nagagawa dito sa loob ng hospital. With this, some healthcare workers from Dr. Jose Fabella Memorial Hospital, as well as those from Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, conducted lunch break protests today. They also plan to proceed with the mass protest actions tomorrow to demand for their benefits, as well as Secretary Duque's resignation, as they deem him incompetent in leading the agency. Harleen? Thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live. The Philippines extends travel restrictions on 10 countries until September 5. Incoming travelers from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, SRI, Sri Lanka, Nepal, United Arab Emirates, Oman, Thailand, Malaysia, and in Indonesia are prevented from entering the country. These travel restrictions are part of government efforts to slow down the rising number of COVID-19 cases, stop further spread of variants, and increase the country's existing, existing health care capacity. The Commission on Higher Education is still waiting for the government's approval to their suggestion to expand face-to-face -face classes to other tertiary courses. CHED is confident that guidelines for physical classes is working, despite some students and faculty members Contracting COVID-19, J.P. Nunez reports. There are 56 individuals tested positive for COVID-19 since limited face-to-face -face classes for medical courses resumed January this year. Commission on Higher Education Chairman Prospero de Vera III says this constitutes 41 students and 15 faculty members. However, this is only less than 1% of the total students and faculty members in 118 public and private universities conducting physical classes. This also proves that face-to-face -face guidelines being followed are working among universities. So out of oh. all the students that are uh, part of the uh, limited face-to-face -face classes, the infection rate was very, very low. It is less than 1%. It is 0.03% of the students got infected, uh, all of the uh, students uh, gumaling na, walang namatay. So that means our, our guidelines are working. Ched also reported that 76% of the students and 95% of the faculty members are vaccinated, which resulted to less contraction to the virus. So we have another layer of uh, protection for the uh, students mm -hmm. and faculty. Kaya medyo maganda yung resulta ng uh, 
uh, limited face-to-face na pinayagan ng Pangulo. Ched also endorsed the expansion of limited face-to-face classes to courses that needs actual trainings. These include maritime, engineering, and hotel and restaurant management courses. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Correction aims to vaccinate 50% of persons deprived of liberty at the new Binibid prison in Muntinlupa City in the next two weeks. But acquiring vaccines is a big challenge for them as of now. Marvin Callas will tell us why. The new Bilibid prison is racing against time in vaccinating persons deprived of liberty. Although almost 80% of its personnel have been inoculated, detainees have not yet received a single COVID-19 shot. This prompted the Bureau of Corrections to source out vaccine supplies. The local government of Muntinlupa, on the other hand, expressed its support to provide vaccine supplies for the NBP detainees. Napaka-importante na mabigyan din ng, ng pagkakataong mabakulahan ng mga BDL kasi pagka nagkaroon po at naman sana, ang apektado po rin yung mga empleyadong naninirahan din sa Montilupa at yung mga nagtatrabaho dyan sa Q-Core. Isa pa, for humanitarian consideration, dapat din naman po natin tulungan ang mga BDL natin dahil ano po yan eh, may mga pamilya din silang babalikan sa kanilang paglabas at may mga kamag-anak silang dumadalaw. Bucor Deputy Director Gabriel Chaklag assures they will try to find means and ways to source out enough vaccine supplies for the PDLs. Nakalapag na rin po yung programa sa mga PDL, nasusunod na sila sa ating uh, vaccination program. At uh, hindi po tayo tumitigil sa ating paghanap ng mga vaccine sources at uh, nakikipag-usap tayo sa local government ng Multilupa City and uh, also with the DOH and the IATF for uh, possible sources of vaccines for, the, for our PDLs. Marvin Calas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And the World Health Organization has confirmed that there is already a community transmission of the COVID-19 Delta variant in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel explains why. From August 24 to 30, the average daily COVID-19 cases in the country is at 17,013. This is 2,000 cases higher compared to the average daily cases last August 17 to 23. Yesterday, the Philippines recorded its highest daily COVID-19 cases at 22,366. Seven out of ten sequence samples in the country are detected with the Delta variant. Most Delta cases are recorded in the National Capital Region, Calabarzon, and Central Luzon. According to the World Health Organization, this proves that the Delta variant is causing the rise of cases in the Philippines. The Delta variant has emerged as the dominant variant. Certainly, based on the limited sequencing data that we have, that is confirmed. Nearly 70% of the last sequencing run was uh, attributed to Delta. With this kind of transmission, with these kinds of numbers, we are in community transmission with the Delta variant. The Department of Health expects a new peak of COVID-19 cases come next month. Looking at the case increase we experienced last March to April, the highest peak was observed on the sixth week after cases started to increase at the end of February. If the same pattern will occur this time around, we may see cases peak mid-September. The country's healthcare utilization rate is at high risk. With more than 70% occupancy rate of hospital beds, ICU capacity and mechanical ventilators in hospitals and facilities. The WHO advises government officials to strengthen the COVID-19 response and avoid experiencing the same fate of other countries that are overwhelmed with cases and deaths. Currently, the country has an average of 114 deaths a day, but this is lower compared to the 134 average daily death cases recorded last April. To prevent getting infected, the public is advised to avoid the three C's, crowded places, close contact settings, and confined or enclosed spaces. Proper ventilation is needed and people should properly wear face masks. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The number of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines rose by 13,827 today, bringing the nationwide tally to 1,989,857. 
The Department of Health or DOH said the latest figure pushed the country's tally of active infections to 145,562. Of these active cases, 95.9% are mild, 0.99% are moderate, 1.4% are asymptomatic, 1.1% are severe, and 0.6% are in critical condition. The DOH noted eight accredited testing laboratories failed to submit their data on time. Total recoveries climbed to 1,810,847 after 16,759 more patients recuperated from the viral disease. Deaths related to COVID-19 rose to 33,448 with 118 new fatalities. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached 217,161,713, while the deaths have surged to 4,511,238, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The United States is still the worst hit country with a number of cases and deaths at 39,057,665 and 638,715 respectively, according to the CSSC, followed by India in terms of cases and Brazil in terms of fatalities. President Rodrigo Duterte challenges lawmakers to investigate all government agencies flagged by the Commission on Audit or COA. Meanwhile, the president issued a warning to lawmakers disrespecting cabinet members during congressional hearings. Rosa Nicos will tell us why. President Rodrigo Duterte questioned the senator's motives for investigating the Department of Health over its management of COVID-19 response funds. He said the upper house seems to be singling out the DOH amid the ongoing pandemic. Alam ba ninyo na halos lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno, ng executive department, may flagging. Kaya nga, ngayon ang gusto kong tanong nito sa mga, ano, mga senador, bakit hindi ninyo s- s- o investigahan lahat? Lahat na na-flag. Marami ang na-flag. Hindi lang ang DOH. Kaya lang ang DOH high profile because of the COVID uh, situation. In his public address aired this morning, he particularly slammed Senator Richard Gordon who leads the investigation. Siya ang nanalo sa Tokaton champion. Lahat puro daldal, kanya ang tanong, kanya yung sagot. At siya magsabi kung mali ka o hindi, anak ng... Ilang beses na yan, manood kayo. Kayong Pilipino, matagal na kayo yan. Nananood kayo. Ganyan si Gordon. Gordon is Gordon. Meanwhile, President Duterte threatened the lawmakers that he will not allow his cabinet members to attend congressional hearings. Kung bastusin ninyo the way you're treating Duke in... He cannot even answer. He cannot even complete his answer without being interrupted. You stand up. If you ping magumapuno ka na, you just stand up. Because if uh, if uh, if contempt ka nila, kulong ka nila, maghanap ako ng paraan. Makukuha ko kayo. Uh, in 24 hours, I will extract you. The senators and congressmen have the authority to cite for contempt those who they think are not telling the truth in public hearings. But it is not clear if this can be done nowadays since proceedings are now being done virtually. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Following the personal insults of President Rodrigo Duterte, Senator Richard Gordon says he forgives the chief executive but maintains that the president should not attack the Senate as an institution. Meanwhile, Senator Christopher Lorenz Bongo hits Gordon as he denies anew his alleged links with a former budget undersecretary being investigated in the Senate. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. 
Senator Richard Gordon says President Duterte should make his former appointees answer the allegations instead of resorting to tirades. According to the senator who heads the Blue Ribbon Committee probe on the health department's use of COVID-19 funds, the personal insults of the president do not affect him anymore. However, he maintains that the president should not attack the Senate as an institution, noting that his committee is only doing its job to ensure accountability among public officials. Mr. President, I advise you, as a friend, if you still consider me a friend, sagutin po lang yun. Pasagot yun sa mga bata nyo yung issue. Bakit yun tatawagin mataba ako? Alam ko po mataba ako. Pando tayo nagpapagandahan ng lalaki. Palagi ko, mananalo naman ako sa inyo pag nagpagandahan ng lalaki tayo. You know why I forgive you? Because you you go into personal attacks. That's fine with me. Alam ko, mahina ang tao na nag-attack yung personal. Sabi mo nga, may hiling ako mag-tokaton. Ay talagang ganyan. Gordon was also disappointed at his colleague, Senator Christopher Bongo, for not standing up for the Senate. He adds there is a possibility that Senator Go may face the Senate Ethics Committee due to his alleged links and influence with the appointment of former Budget Undersecretary Lloyd Christopher Lau. In today's Senate session, Go says he is willing to face any probe as he took the floor to deny once again his alleged ties with the former Budget official. However, he also criticized Gordon, saying that the Senator has been unfair in conducting the Senate probe. Sobrang unfair naman po para lang sumikat ka, ikaw lang nag-iimbestiga at nagtatanong, ikaw pa ang sasagot at huhusga. Tapos magagalit ka pag hindi ayon sa gusto mo ang sagot. Tapos ngayon, nandadamay ka pa ng kapwa mo, Senador. He also believes that Gordon should inhibit in the Senate investigations involving PhilHealth being the chairman of Philippine Red Cross. The former special assistant to the president also defended his closeness to the chief executive. Karapatan mo na questionin ang pagiging malapit ko sa Pangulo. Nangako ako sa Pangulo, hindi ko siya iwanan abang buhay. At amin na lang yun. Dahil mahal ko ang Pangulo. Gordon responds by saying that this has been one of the attempts to distract the Senate investigation. Nasaan napunta ang limpak-limpak na bilyon na pera? Yan lang ang tinatanong. Kaya kung mainit, nainitan kayo, nainitan kayo dahil hindi maipaliwanag. At pag sinususian ninyo kami, lalo kaming magbubukas pilit. Dahil para bang iniiwas nyo kami, nilalansin nyo kami. Ito, tangkang maglansin na naman ito. Gordon maintains that his committee will not be distracted and will continue the inquiry firmly and fairly. Jorlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Senator Aimee Marcos sees a possible tandem between her brother Bongbong Marcos and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio. However, President Rodrigo Duterte says otherwise. Janice and Henter reports why. In his recorded talk to the people this morning, President Rodrigo Duterte claimed that Senator Aimee Marcos is eyeing to become the running mate of Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio. This is if Mayor Sara would run for presidency in the 2022 elections. Well, ang ayon si Aime. Medyo kasi si Aime ganito ang laro niya nai. Pero puntahan niya si Mayor sa Duterte sa Tabaw, hoping na magtak mong magtakbo yon. Uh, siya ang maging busy. Eh, hindi naman tatakbo. Sabi niya, sabi ni Mayor Dut Sara Duterte, eh, hindi siya magtakbo. The Marcos siblings, Senator Aimee and Bongbong Marcos, recently visited Davao City and met with Mayor Sara before her birthday. However, according to Senator Aimee, the tandem of Mayor Sara Duterte and her brother will be a marriage made in heaven. The president, meanwhile, once again confirmed his bid for vice presidency. Pero sabi ko magtakbo ako ng vice president. Bakit? Walang oposisyon eh. Hindi man manalo yung oposisyon eh. Sigurado ako, yung otso-diretso ulit na naman yun. 
o wala ko lang pinakita sa Pilipinas eh. Meanwhile, more groups have expressed support should Vice President Lenny Robredo decide to run for president in the 2022 polls. A global feminist action network, the World March of Women, launched a project called Keri Di Lenny Laban Momshi. Ngayon, tahasan kaming mga kampanya para kay Vice President Lenny Robredo. Una, para kumbinsihin siyang tumakbo. Tumakbo bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas at ikalawa ay itulak ang kanyang pagkapanalo. Sa aming tingin, ang kanyang pagtakbo at pagkapanalo ay isa sa mga susi ng pagbigo sa Dutertismo o pananatili sa kapangyarihan ng Duterte Dynasty. Kasama ng kanyang anak at alalay at iba pang nagtataguyod na mapangaping pamamalakad nila. The group appealed to VP Robredo to accept the offer of the Isambayan Coalition to be the standard bearer of the party. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Foreign Affairs admitted on Tuesday that there is a backlog of passport renewals amounting to 3 to 4 million because of the pan pandemic. To address this problem, BFA is asking for additional funding. Nel Maribohok details why. The Department of Foreign Affairs is seeking the approval of more than 53 million pesos for the additional off-site passport service in the country. Foreign Affairs Undersecretary Brigido Dulay revealed that they need additional 10 to 20 temporary off-site passport services to minimize the backlog. They are also considering implementing contactless renewal but emphasized that this will undergo studies first. We still have to vet uh, the countries that actually use contactless renewals and we are trying to get the best practices but as of the moment, uh, Your Honor, uh, we are still following the rule of personal appearance just to ensure uh, the identity of the foreign applicants. So, and to improve its passport delivery, DFA Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. said he already terminated the services of the previous courier and is now looking for a more effective company. Let me tell you that I fired the uh, courier service that didn't know what they were doing. Um, now I have told uh, my people that, they will, that, that those who apply for passports, uh, renewal or whatever, will have will be allowed to choose which courier they want. Instead of saying, you want a courier or no courier, if you say courier, it's No. From now on, there will be a choice and there will be competition. That will never happen again. The DFA Secretary's decision to ease out the official service provider came as a result of widespread complaints against delays and confusions in the delivery of passports to applicants. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar maintained that domestic remedies are working in the country for those who seek investigations on the government's war on illegal drugs. This after an international criminal court registry stated that 94% of the drug war victims want the ICC to look into the government's alleged crimes against humanity amid the drug war. Lea Ilagan reports. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar respects the decision of families of the persons killed in the anti-illegal drug operations if they wish to seek an international criminal court investigation. But Eliazar says Philippine justice system works. Proof of this is the conviction of the policeman who killed Guillen de los Santos. Aside from this, there are other court decisions that caused the dismissal and imprisonment of other PNP personnel. Karapatan ng bawat isa sa atin na idulog ang ating hinaing kung saan natin inakalang matutugunan ito. General Eliazar said, killings amid a drug war are already being investigated by the DOJ. We already made several initiatives to prove that the PNP has no policy of allowing and tolerating all forms of human rights abuses in the conduct operations. Eliasar adds, in order to have transparency, PNP operatives are now using body-worn camera during the conduct of drug operations. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and the Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 
Some overseas Filipino workers bound for Hong Kong are having difficulty trying to book a flight. This comes after the Hong Kong government banned Philippine Airlines flights from bringing in passengers from Manila over COVID-19 cases. Because of this, a group of migrant workers made an appeal to the government. Ray Pelayo details why. A group of Filipino migrant workers in Hong Kong is appealing to the government to help fellow OFWs affected by the prohibition. Migrante Hong Kong Secretary General Eman Villanueva said some Filipinos who are already scheduled to start working in the next two weeks are having a hard time booking or rebooking a flight. We hope na the Hong Kong government will reconsider this kasi hindi rin namin makita yung logic na uh, specific lang na airline yung pinagbawal, pinagbawal samantalang other airlines are allowed to bring in passengers. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III earlier clarified that OFWs are still allowed to enter Hong Kong. They just need to choose an airline authorized to bring in passengers from Manila. They also need to secure a yellow card certified by the Bureau of Quarantine as proof of their vaccination. Baka may statement ang Hong Kong government na tuloy pa rin ang pag-deploy ng ating mga OFW na nabakunahan na. On the other hand, Philippine Airlines maintained that all three passengers presented a negative COVID-19 test results when they checked in for their flights. The flag carrier also assured that it will comply with the restriction but will still operate on an all-cargo basis. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, a total of 187 Filipinos have been evacuated from Afghanistan since the Taliban took over power. The Philippine government, meanwhile, has set conditions for allowing refugees from the war-torn country. Nel Maribuhok will tell us why. Two more Filipinos have moved out of Afghanistan. They were safely brought to Qatar and United Kingdom according to the Department of Foreign Affairs. As of now, 24 OFWs remain in Kabul and have already requested repatriation while 16 others have signified their desire to stay. As of August 30, there are only 24 Filipinos remaining in Kabul with eight requesting repatriation and 16 signifying their desire to remain. With the help of our partner countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Kuwait, France, Norway, Indonesia, Pakistan, Qatar, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and Germany, 187 Filipinos have been evacuated. Filipinos remaining in Afghanistan were advised to reach out via WhatsApp and Viber account, Facebook Messenger, or through email if the need arises. Meanwhile, the Philippines would continue to extend humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. But Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. made it clear that the government will only accept refugees through government-to-government -government arrangements. I cannot say more. The situation is fluid, to put it mildly. But let me add this warning. We will not engage in any asylum, uh, in giving any asylum, unless it is on a government-to-government -government basis. We will not deal with private sector. Malacanang earlier said the Philippines is willing to accept refugees fleeing Afghanistan after the war-torn country was taken over by the Taliban. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad. The United States of America finally completed the evacuation of its military troops from Afghanistan. However, many U.S. civilians were left behind. Pasilito Likido will tell us why live. Yes, Pasilito, please go ahead. Marielle, the United States declares the end of its 20-year-long war with Afghanistan after successfully evacuating more than 122,000 U.S. citizens, citizens of U.S. allies, and Afghan allies of the United States. The last plane left Kabul's Hamid Karzai International Airport just one minute before President Joe Biden's evacuation deadline. The evacuation process lasted for a total of 16 days. However, U.S. Central Command Head General Frank McKenzie said that despite this monumental accomplishment, 
hundreds of U.S. civilians were sadly left behind in Afghanistan. Look, there's a lot of heartbreak associated with this departure. We did not get everybody out that we wanted to get out. But I think if we'd stayed another 10 days, Louis, we wouldn't have gotten everybody out. President Joe Biden, in a statement released by the White House, defended his decision to stick with the original deadline. Biden stated that this decision is unanimous with Joint Chiefs and military commanders in preserving the lives of the military troops. U.S. General State Anthony Blinken stated that the evacuation of 200 Americans remaining in Afghanistan has no deadline and that, that the U.S. will work in reopening civilian travel via Kabul airport. U.S. General McKenzie stated that this is the diplomatic mission of the U.S. will continue to uphold with Afghanistan. Mariel? Thank you, Jose Rito Likido, for that live report. 80% of Singapore's population have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Therese Longbowen has this report live. Yes, Therese, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. Singapore's Health Minister Ong Ye Kung on Sunday announced through a Facebook post the country's milestone of fully vaccinating 80% of their 5.7 million population on its fight against COVID-19. This makes Singapore the country with the highest rate of fully vaccinated against COVID-19 according to Reuters COVID-19 vaccination tracker. This achievement is through the collective effort of those working behind the scenes and the people of Singapore who volunteer to take care of themselves and the ones around them. The country was also able to vaccinate 4,300 homebound individuals through their home vaccination teams, which already tripled from 11 to 33 and still continue to receive around 700 requests every week. According to Health Minister Ong, Singapore is targeting to accomplish all home vaccination by the end of September. As of yesterday's report of Singapore's Ministry of Health, the country has more than 67,000 total COVID-19 cases. 1,272 of them are active and a total of 55 deaths. Marielle? All right, thank you for that live report, Therese Longbowen. China limits its children from playing video games to no more than three hours per week. Marvi Delfin will tell us why live. Yes, Marvi, please go ahead. Marielle, starting Thursday, online gaming companies will be prohibited from providing services to children under 18 years old outside the allowed gaming hours. According to China's National Press and Publication Administration, children can only play video games between 8 and 9 p.m. on Fridays, weekends, and on public holidays. This is a drop from the restriction set in 2019, allowing the young ones to play for an hour and a half per day and three hours hours on public holidays. The new restrictions come amidst the crackdown on major tech companies by Beijing and growing concerns of Chinese authorities over gaming addiction among children. Tech giants will be forced to impose real name verification systems with a more frequent monitoring system to be put in place. Psychologists say parents or guardians play a very important role in encouraging minors to move away from video games. This can be done by encouraging a more active lifestyle through outdoor activities and explain the risks associated with video games. Mariel? Marvi, what are the known symptoms of gaming disorder? Marielle, according to ICD-11, gaming disorder is characterized by impaired control over gaming, such as frequency and duration. There's also increased priority given to gaming over other things, resulting to neglect of family, friends, education, and work commitments. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Marvi Delfin, for that live report. COVID-19 pandemic is bringing the world to a life-altering challenge limiting people's movements for long periods of time. And this somehow contributed to an increase in physical inactivity. But the right amount of exercise can counter the risk of sedentary behavior and lifestyle. Nisette Bendana will tell us why. 
30 to 40 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity per day is about the right amount needed to reverse the harms of sitting or lying down for 10 hours. The study was based on a systematic review covering previous studies, engaging participants of more than 44,000 individuals in four different countries. All participants were monitored using a wearable activity tracking device. The rundown found risk of premature death among those living a century or inactive lifestyle increase as moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity decreased. The publication coincides with the World Health Organization's 2020 Global Guidelines of Physical and Sentry Behavior, which highlight the importance of regularly undertaking both aerobic and muscle strengthening activities. The WHO also emphasizes that any activity is better than none, like walking around the block or taking stairs instead of using elevators. According to Emmanuel Stamatakis, a physical activity and population health researcher at the University of Sydney, Australia, the guidelines are very timely, given that we are in the middle of a global pandemic which has confined people indoors for long periods and encouraged an increase in sentry behavior. Nisette Bendanya, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Mariela Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a final word, giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 5, it says, Open rebuke is better than secret love. And those are the reasons behind the news, August 31, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Delta variant has emerged as the dominant variant. With this kind of transmission, with these kinds of numbers, we are in community transmission with the Delta variant. Mr. President, I advise you, uh, as a friend, if you still consider me a friend, sagutin po lang nyo, masagot nyo doon sa mga bata nyo yung issue. Bakit nyo tatawagin mataba ako? Alam ko po mataba ako. Pando tayo nagpapagandahan ng lalaki. Palagi ko, mananalo naman ako sa inyo pagka nagpagandahan ng lalaki tayo. Siya ang nanalo sa Tokaton champion lat puro dal dal kanya ang tanong kanya yung sagot at kaksa magsabi kung mali ka o hindi anak ng ilang beses na yan manood kayo kayong Pilipino matagal na kayo yan nanonood kayo ganyan si Gordon Gordon is Gordon 